Hey, what's up everybody? My name's Luke and I'm one of the photographic guides at Wild Eye and this is my friend Trev over here. He's a subpar photographic guide here at Wild Eye. You know, we just had to shoot the hoop about um, a couple of settings. I'm just joking, Trev's an amazing photographer. But uh, we just had to shoot the, sh the, shoot the hoop about a couple of settings and, uh, you know, we got into a discussion the other day, just in the office, and it was only once this discussion was over that we were kind of like, damn, we should have actually recorded yeah. that because it was quite a cool discussion. So. Um, Basically, it started off with me asking Trevor how he shoots and how, you know, how he advises people. Now, to give you a bit of background, I'm a full manual shooter. So that means manual across the board, including manual ISO. And Trevor, you are a? So I mainly shoot on aperture priority mode for, I'd say, 80% of my photography. But there are some cases where I will go full manual. Yeah. Um, and that's normally when the light is very, very bad or okay. spotlight photography. So yeah, and I mean, there's, at night. There's and I've got full control over all my settings and I know exactly what's going yeah, on. Yeah, and I find that's, you know, when you, when you find people that are struggling to take a photograph, a lot of the time people do need to shoot in manual, right? Just, you know, it depends. Even if you're shooting a good sunrise or sunset, a lot of the time if you're shooting an aperture priority or shutter priority or even full auto, some crazy people do that, you know, you're just not going to get a feel because the camera is going to continually try and you're trying to, you know, completely and perfectly expose that particular yeah. scene, whereas you really want to remove a lot of the light or bring in a lot of the light. And the best way to do that is if you're shooting in full manual. Now, I do sometimes shoot in aperture priority. Um, very, very, very rarely uh, why? will I do that. Well, why? what's the point to doing? You know, look, I, I get it. A lot of people struggle with full manual, and that's because you have to think a lot on the fly. And yeah. for, for someone like myself to think, that someone that always shoots in full aperture or shutter priority should just be able to pick up full manual and, and photograph like this yeah, is, yeah. you know, that's a bit unfair as well. Yeah. But um, to be honest, I, I like to have full control of my camera and, you know, I find that I get much more pleasing results. Sure, I'm, I probably miss a lot more photographs mm -hmm. than you do, but the photographs that I do get, I tend to prefer a lot more. And, you know, it's been a long time since I've tried to shoot in full time yeah. aperture priority. So. Yeah. yeah, so my, my reasoning behind aperture priority is when I bought my first camera, I had literally, like I saved up over months, I bought this expensive camera at Lens and was super stoked until I got home, opened mm. the box and realized I had no cooking tea. <laughs> yeah, was going just on. like all of us, yeah. Um, so I learned through like a lot of YouTube videos and things and in terms of wildlife photography, a lot of, at, 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 at that time, a lot of wildlife photographers were suggesting aperture priority. Mm. So for me, the reason why I do it and the reason why I still continue to do it, I mean, there's another discussion to be had on shooting manual with auto ISO, yeah. which is becoming more and more common, it is. which I'm finding it is. with guests out in the field. Yeah. But the which reason is crazy as well, but we'll get onto that. <laughs> yeah. The reason I, I shoot on aperture priority is I can obviously control my ISO, and my aperture, and my exposure compensation. Yeah. So I have a rough idea at different times of the day what my setting should be. But when I lift up my camera, the first thing that I do is I look at the bottom left hand side to see what my shutter speed mm. is. Now for me, personally, it's, it's preference. I like to have a shutter speed where I can between 800th of a second and 2.5 thousandth of a second. Yeah. That's just personally where I would like to be. Yeah. So yeah. I then make adjustments accordingly, either by adjusting my ISO or adjusting my aperture value just to, to, to try and rectify the yeah. shutter speed. Well, you know, I, I get that, but at the same time, you know, when you're shooting an aperture priority, you're in charge of aperture, mm. ISO, and exposure compensation. Yeah. So why not just drop exposure compensation and take charge of shutter speed? For me, in wildlife photography, Shutter speed is the most important thing, yeah, right? And I look at the at, at the three tangible things that can give you light, shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. The way that I look at it is shutter speed first, then I address ISO, and then I address aperture. All right, so the whole idea is when you get to a sighting, and I mean, we, as we were talking about the other day, it depends on the subject that you photograph, yeah, right? Correct. Small birds, things like that, you know, things you're trying to wait maybe to take off or take flight, you want to have a very fast shutter speed. Yeah. A lion just sitting next to the vehicle looking at you, you don't need a very fast shutter speed. Yeah. So, you know, it, it comes with a bit of experience knowing what you need in order to photograph the subject that's in front of you. And generally speaking, the smaller the subject becomes, the faster your shutter speed needs to become. You know, even a, a, an elephant that's feeding right next to you, shutter yeah. speed of like 400 is going to be yeah. fine you know yeah. obviously if it suddenly does something you're going to miss the shot but yeah. my argument is is that if if you're going to be using exposure compensation why not just forget about exposure compensation and just go on to full manual and take control of your shutter speed which you know i, I don't like leaving that variable up to chance 
especially yeah. shutter speed, yeah. bird in flight, something like that, a lion yawning. You know, how many times have you busted a shot of a lion yawning? That's you know, true. you think you've got a fast enough yeah. shutter speed until they actually start yawning and the whiskers start, you know, doing their yeah, thing yeah. and the tongue comes yeah. out and, and you, you think you've got a cool shot. You get back to your computer, you look at it at the big screen, you're like, damn it, I wasn't quick yeah. enough, you know. Obviously, I get it. Aperture is going to give you that depth, but first and foremost, aperture is going to give you light or yeah. it's going to take light away, yeah. right? Yeah. That's how I look at aperture. Then I look at aperture from a point, from a depth uh, uh, um, a depth point of view, you know. Yeah. So you know, it, a lot of variables come into it. What lens are you using? So are you using a six hundred mm. Yeah, it is, is interesting quite, because you know, I, both both arguments aren't wrong. There's, there's no right or wrong answer no, to no. it. Yeah. So for me, I've just been doing. I've been using aperture priority for the last fourteen years. Yeah, yeah that's funny. So you say for that. me, yeah. I mean. I know that when I'm, I'm confident when I go out and especially with guests and I find it with guests who are beginning beginner photographers aperture priority is a lot easier to teach than Absolutely. that than I manual yeah. I understand manual yeah. completely yeah. but I still personally my personal preference is to shoot on um, aperture priority Absolutely. because yeah. I can I can I look at at um, my aperture value more you, you you go straight for the light I go more for depth of field yeah so I go for for example, when you head out on Game Drive, I'll have a rough idea of, of the settings that I want before we even come across a sighting. So yeah. I would say, for example, okay, it's after yeah, it's the time bright, of day, the sun is Let's yeah. go with an aperture of 7.1. I'm not thinking from a light point of view mm. because I know that there's enough light to use. I'm thinking of it from a point of view of we come around the corner, what's what's going to be there? Yeah. Is it going to be, yeah. what's my subject? Is it yeah. going to be an elephant? Cheetah could or run is, across the road in front of you. Or is it going to yeah. be a leopard cub? Yeah. It, could, it could be yeah. any of the, any, and anything yeah. in between. So I go for more of the safety point of view using aperture, using depth of field, mm. where I can. Mm. But obviously on aperture priority, then you, you're watching your shutter speed and you've got to then, depending on the light, when the light starts to get tricky, you've got to then make sacrifices. Absolutely. And it, it would yeah. be the same on manual, but I would then start bringing my aperture value down. So I'm sacrificing depth of field. To get your shutter speed up. To get right? my shutter speed up yeah. before I start li lifting my eyes. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. Once, I, once I get to F4 on my fixed 500 F4, I can't go any lower. Yeah. So yeah. then my next adjustment is going to be starting to raise my eyes so slowly to yeah. try and keep a faster shutter speed. Yeah. That's my 2.8 is the way. And then also, the and then <laughs> also you, it, it's. It, some photographs you shoot for post-processing. So mm -hmm. for me on aperture priority, when the light starts to go, I'll even, because you've got to remember your, your, your sense is obviously averaging out. It doesn't like whites and blacks. It wants to make everything gray. Yeah, yeah. So Literally. it averages yeah. things out. So what I often then do is I'll use my exposure compensation when I don't want to push my ISO any higher than what it is and I can't bring my aperture value down any further. Mm -hmm. I'll then underexpose, which means that the back of my screen shows me a darker image, but in my mind, I'm shooting for the post-processing but because yeah, as long as I don't yeah. burn out those dark yeah. areas, yeah. I can always bring back that detail. And I mean, it's always one of those things you advise to guests and clients is rather, if you need to, rather underexpose the scene by a little bit to get a, a faster shutter speed exactly. than, than trying to hit zero all the time. Exactly. Knowing that in post-processing, you know, it's, it's far easier to bring a photograph back from underexposed than it is to bring it down from overexposed, yeah, right? Exactly. But you know, it's, it's an interesting point because you said that you know the way that you learned was on aperture priority. I mean, yeah. I remember when I first got my very first DSLR, we we kind of went to the Kruger myself and my wife, and there was a couple there that showed me how to use the camera, and what they taught me was basically manual settings from yeah. day one, and that's always where my mind's gone. And that was a long time ago now, and it's it kind of it just shows you, it it really is those first steps that you show and all the first routes you show and that kind of sticks with you forever. And ever since then, I've been basically a full-time manual shooter and um, I've definitely dabbled in shutter. I would rather go shutter priority than aperture priority because I view speed and, yeah, yeah. and light and so I on more that. than depth of field, yeah. I get that. Um, but there's valid points to be made on either side. It's, you know, for me, it's always great when I get a new guest that's really quite new to photography and I'm like, cool, let's go full manual. Let's yeah. really get them into it and so forth. But I've also had some good, um, some good feedback or some, some good experiences or, or results from having people that are usually either aperture priority yeah. or manual 
they call themselves manual, but then they shoot auto ISO. Yeah. And I've had some good experiences or results in bringing those people up into full manual. Yeah. And, and seeing the joy that they get out of it. Now, I also see the frustration because all of a sudden their fingers are having to do things that they weren't used to before. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But as soon as they click, and it takes a good you three, four days of like memory. hard tutoring and, and missing yeah. shots and yeah. so forth. But as soon as they click, they start to realize that, hold on, this is a bright scene. I don't want to expose this scene perfectly. Yeah. I want to expose it in a way that's darker or brighter or whatever it is. Yeah. I'm trying to get the frog eye to pop out yeah. therefore I need to overexpose it and you know what I need to do is slow down the shutter speed or, or whatever it might be but there's definitely an argument from both sides that can be made against auto ISO and yes. that's something that gives me the heebie-jeebies because ISO you know the way that I view it when you've got those three things you know if you think about the the classic triangle, triangle. right you get your shutter your aperture and then ISO ISO is such an important thing for me in photography it, it is the way that you bring color into your photograph yes. and it's the way that you bring light into your photograph. Yes. There's two ways to look at it. So the lower you can get your ISO, the more crystal clear, more vibrant uh, and more lively yeah. image you're gonna have. The, uh, as you push it up, obviously the more light you're gonna get, but it's not tangible light. You, you're messing around with the settings or the sensitivity. I know it's not the correct way to say it, but essentially the sensitivity of your sensor. Yes. And with that comes noise and degradation and color and a loss and things. So I get that some people will set auto ISO and then they'll limit it to like 6400. Yeah. But, you know, if you're an aperture priority and you've got your ISO limited to 6400, the amount of times your camera is going to try to get to 6400 just to get you a shutter speed, yeah. is, you're, or, or 3200 or 1600, See, an ISO that you really don't need to be at in order to get that particular exactly. scene. You're leaving too much of a chance and you're throwing away too much color, yeah. in my opinion. Now, I know a lot of the big photographers that shoot auto ISO, it, it helps you not miss images, but the, I don't know, for the, me it's just... For, yeah. for me, I understand it during the day when good light is available. I understand it because you yeah, don't necessarily have to think about it that much. But yeah. my issue comes in and, you know, having traveled quite a lot recently, the biggest issue that comes through with auto ISO is that you driving along, you're chatting in the vehicle, the light starts going, mm. everybody's happy with their settings. Say something about, yeah. And you arrive at something and it all goes down and someone who's shooting on auto ISO mm. doesn't realize that it's gone up to 6,400 or yeah. even higher. Yeah. 100,000. 100, <laughs> 100, 100, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And on the back of your screen, yeah. you're looking, it looks like absolute magic. Yeah. But yeah. the thing is, you could have been shooting at 1,600 ISO yeah. had you had the correct aperture value. Yeah. And, yeah. and even with a spotlight, you can often get your ISO down to like 800, yeah. 640, yeah. steady up, slow yeah. down your shutter speed, you know, and, and, and things like that. Whereas when you're leaving it to auto ISO with a spotlight or a low light situation, it's just going to pump through the roof yeah. and you're going to lose and a I lot also of control, feel, you know. I mean, there, there is some situations where you are going to have to pump your ISO up and you are going to have noise. So you would rather Absolutely. have a noisy image yeah. than no image. Yeah. Yeah. But my argument is that you need to pay attention to your yeah. ISO. Big it's, time. It's, it shouldn't yeah. be something that should be auto that you just yeah, let, leave, let, leave to chance. Leave, leave to chance yeah. Because yeah. There's, there's so much there, like what you said, in, in terms of shooting with a lower ISO value, you're getting more color and yeah. in your image. Yeah. That's smooth so and more beautiful why image, are you yeah. sacrificing that during decent light yeah. where your ISO is being pushed up just because you've set your shutter at a certain point? Yeah, yeah. No, exactly. I mean, you know, I, I, one of my mottos, and, and a, a number of my guests will laugh, um, is ISO is your friend. You know, if you need more shutter speed, push your ISO. All of us, you know, unless you're using someone, someone that's using like an old D3200 yeah. or a yeah. Rebel T, <laughs> whatever they are. You know, if you're using one of those cameras, be very cautious of ISO, folks. Mm. But if you're using a camera that's of, an, of like a prosumer or let's say something like a A7 or a D850 or a yeah. 5D4 or whatever it might be or, or R5, these cameras are very capable of pushing ISO. Now I'm not meaning like ISO 102,000, but 3200, 6400, even going a little bit past that is, is very reasonable to use yeah. these new cameras at. And yeah. you know, particularly if you're in good light. Yeah. And you know, if you're around a major kill site and the, the lights pretty good, but you know, not direct sunlight or whatever, feel free to push your ISO in order to get that shutter speed up to like 4,000, yeah. six, you know, 8,000, whatever it might be, to yeah. just freeze those vultures coming into the kill or off the yeah. kill yeah. in perfect clarity. Because you know, at the end of the day, it's not just ISO that's gonna produce noise. It's that combination of ISO and shutter Correct. speed that produces noise. Yes. So don't be scared to push your ISO all the way up so that you can get, you know, it's, it's yeah. kind of this, this middle ground. You really have to pay attention to what your camera and your lens are capable of. 
um, but use ISO. Don't be scared yeah. of ISO. Too many people are scared of ISO. And what I find is people go onto YouTube, right? And they search, what is ISO? Or, or they watch a few clips. And immediately, you know, there's very few wildlife photographers on YouTube. Yeah. Maybe there's a gap there, but, we, you know, we'll chat about that. Yeah. But, you know, there's very few wildlife <laughs> photographers on, on YouTube. And so what you usually find are, you know, Jared Polins, uh, the Northups, you know, these, these kind of channels that are usually fully focused on kind of internal or, or interior photography, yeah. studio photography, um, you know, maybe scene and setting photography. And these, these people usually prescribe, like, don't push ISO, be scared of it. You're going to get, you're going to get mm. noise. Don't push it too high. But when you're in beautiful natural sunlight out in Amboseli or Serengeti yeah. or Kruger, wherever it is, yeah. and you've got that beautiful 8 a.m., 9 a.m., quite strong, powerful light, yeah. push your ISO, man. You're not going to see any degradation. You're not going to yeah. see any noise yeah. coming through. The better your light, it act, actually, the better the light, the higher you can push yeah. your ISO, funny enough, and, and be pretty sure you're not going to get noise, right? Yeah, exactly. So that's my argument against auto ISO. And I think, you know, you being on aperture priority and me being on manual, we can find a, a common middle ground of yeah. uh, auto ISO is I, not the way to go. But then again, I know some big just, guys that do it, auto but, ISO. But and that's it. That I think it just, it, it just comes down to personal preference mm. at the end of the day. Yeah. And, and I think the most important thing out of it is whether you're shooting on aperture priority mode or full manual or manual with auto ISO is understanding the capabilities yeah. within that mode. Yeah. What you need to do and when you need to do yeah. it. And if you understand yeah. that, I've got no problem with what mode you're shooting on. Absolutely. And I mean, but if you are shooting in, auto, in aperture priority or auto ISO, like you say, as soon as you look through your viewfinder, you go left, look at your shutter speed, you're paying attention to what all your readings yeah. are giving you. You're not just happy go lucky shooting, which exactly. a lot of people put into these kind of settings and yeah. just go, well, cool, I know my camera's going to expose every time for me. Yeah. You know? And then they wonder yeah. why the wings are blurred and things yeah. like that. Exactly. But if you're going to shoot in one of these, in one of these priority settings, even manual, yeah. you have, manual, you have to be super aware of what, what you're doing. Aperture priority, you have to watch that shutter and you have to watch your ISO. And yeah. you have to understand that if you push your aperture up to f8, then you have to do something with your ISO to get your shutter speed into a reasonable yeah. or zone. Or exposure compensation. Or exposure, well, you know, yeah. yeah. I don't think like that, you know. Yeah, exposure yeah, compensation yeah. is just a button that I reroute on my camera to something else. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, um, but yeah, it's just one of those things. If you're gonna shoot in any one of these, you have to be mindful of what you're doing. Yeah. It's, it's not just a, put it into auto a, or aperture priority and forget about it and then just photograph everything that comes your way. And all three ways is no simple. right or wrong way about no, it. No, there really isn't. There yeah. really isn't. So as long as you're having fun taking photographs. That's all that counts. Yeah. And yeah. it's pretty fun to get into these discussions on the back of the vehicle as well. Yeah. Um, you know, and to help people maybe change the way that they see things. You know, for me, exposure compensation was always something that I viewed when I did try and shoot aperture yeah. or shutter priority uh, in a back lighting situation. Cool. Bring it down okay. by a third yeah. of a stop. Yeah. In a front lighting situation, bring it over by, you know, these yeah. sort of things. And that's kind of how I always viewed, you know, exposure compensation, but I understand there's a lot deeper use to it yeah. um, than, yeah. than what I know of it. Yeah. Um, I know what it does, I know how to use it, but I'm, I wouldn't say I'm like you where I'm a wizard with it and understand yeah. what I need to do. But forgive me, when you change your exposure compensation, so say you go up by a third yeah. or up by a full stop, yeah. does your shutter speed go up with that? No. No, yeah. If, if I so, overexpose, it slows it down. Yeah, sorry. So, so it, does it, it does it automatically slow down the shutter speed? Yes. Okay, so it is doing that. So, yeah. but yeah, my argument is just drop exposure compensation <laughs> and use shutter. But the, my you argument know, is that why would you so click something to to affect your shutter speed when you can just affect your shutter speed? It's true. Yeah. It's true. It, it just comes down to what you feel comfortable with. Absolutely. You know, for me, yeah. I, I'm happy when I arrive at a scene. I'm confident enough to sit there and say, okay, guys, for example, a bird sitting in a tree with a bright sky behind. I mm. automatically know that, okay, we've got decent light. I, I know that our ISO is this, our aperture value is this, mm. and our shutter speeds, so forth. But being such a small part of subject, I automatically know that we're going to have to overexpose by at least a full stop. Yeah. Just to get detail out. So, and that, yeah. so that's the yeah. information that I, I give out. And mm. for me, that's a more natural feel because that's what I've done for the yeah. last 14 yeah. years. Alternatively, you just drive on and find another <laughs> <laughs> That too, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 But it's, yeah. It is, it's always those tricky situations where you have a guest that really wants to photograph this hornbill that's against a hugely bright sky. And they're like, okay, well, let's get into it. You know, let's try and yeah. bring out detail on that yeah. bird. And, yeah. you know, if you know how to do that, it's, pr it's pretty cool. But, um, 
you know, what, what was I going to say now? You, you were saying a little bit earlier, like, you would like to know that if you pick up your camera, you're going to be able to get a, a photograph, you know, should a, should a leopard yes. smash a guinea file on the road in front of yeah. you, whatever it is. So it's funny, I, you know, I've got a guest named Elizabeth Storms, and she will always say to me, what's my Hail Mary settings here? You know, if we're just driving around, we've, we're, we're driving around and we've left one side and we're moving on to the next side and she'll say, right, we're driving around. What if something just randomly, we're in full manual, yeah, by the way. Yeah. What if something just randomly happens and what, what's the best setting, the Hail Mary setting, right? So I always say F8, yeah. right? Because F8 is just kind of that, that Goldilocks. Yeah. You, don't, you don't know how much depth you need. F8 generally does it if you're using a Prime yeah. or 2.0 or 400, 300. Uh, then at least keeping your shutter speed to like 1250, 1600. Yeah. So maybe go to 1600, if 8, 1600, and then whatever your ISO needs to be in order to do that. But when you're in full manual, let's, you know, you've got 20, 30 minutes before light changes, maybe an hour depending yeah. on the time. You need to actually just look at a scene, grass blowing in the wind with sunlight on it, load in what the ISO should be, and then at least you're in that ballpark. So that's always my Goldilocks. If 8, but 1600 my, my, shutter, and then whatever your ISO so, has to be to get you So there. my fear with that would be that you have this Hail Mary setting, mm. okay, and you're driving around for an hour That's chatting. not to say you're not going to quickly click if things need to change, right? But it's at least within the zone. See, but it's, so it's, within it's having the that understanding. Yeah. So I do that, that's, that's where my aperture priority mind kicks in because mm. the thing is I know that with the settings that I've given my guests that it's going to give you a ballpark decent image. Yeah. yeah. No matter what. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and constantly, like you said, light changes every 20, 30, yeah. 40 minutes. And as a guard, you have to remember to be like, you, light's you, changed. Exactly, you know, yeah. yeah. So on aperture priority, I'm more comfortable knowing that my guest's shutter speed is going to be fast enough because I know the settings in my mind, what they are. I've had a look at the mm. lights, I've picked up mm. my camera. And then if, if something, you come around the corner and there's action and there's stuff going on, they're going to be taking photographs. They may not be perfect in terms yeah. of lighting, yeah. but there's going to be more than enough to work on afterwards. At the Whereas computer, I, right? I find that with manual, once again, it's not right or wrong, but if you on a certain shutter speed and something suddenly happens and you haven't realized to change anything, mm. you're going to, you have, elephants fighting or you come and there's two male leopards rolling in the road mm. and then you're going to snap away because the adrenaline's pumping through your veins yeah, yeah. and then you look at your images and they're going to be overexposed yeah. or underexposed well, and you're going to be like that's why always less speed more haste right don't just pick up your camera and start happy snapping in, yeah. in full manual yeah, right yeah. it's not yeah. something that you do it's yeah. something that you you look through you check your exposure meter you watch that thing like a hawk yeah. you know when you are a manual sh yeah. shooter that exposure meter all the time and as long as you're within an acceptable thing like you say generally underexposed is better than overexposed as Correct, we said yeah. a bit earlier yeah. but yeah you you there is a there is a, a um um a f like kind of a fallback of, of yeah full manual versus aperture and that yeah. priority, right? Yeah. But it, it, once again, once you locked into it and you've got your reflexes in and so forth, which is hard to attain, yeah. um, and you're watching that thing, that exposure meter, um, take your time, yeah. figure it out. The elephants yeah. will fight for a little bit longer, you know, you, yeah. you're not gonna miss, it's rather true. build the exposure and get well exposed images than just happy snap, get a whole bunch of images, forget about your settings, get back and be really pissed off yeah. that you didn't get yeah. anything great and then want to punch yeah. a photo guard. <laughs> <laughs> so I think but basically through, through this discussion, I hope it hasn't confused you all because yeah. we've mentioned a lot of different things of advantages <laughs> and disadvantages. Feel free to pause and play and pause <laughs> and go back. But I, but think, yeah. I think the main, the main point that we're trying to get across here is that there's no right or wrong way to do it. Absolutely. I think yeah. the most important yeah. thing is to do what you feel comf most mm. comfortable with and to understand why you are shooting in that mode and and yeah and, and how just, that and mode just, works and yeah. how that mode yeah. works yeah. and just to constant especially with wildlife photography and and with having so many external elements that aren't in our control i think understanding how that mode works and constantly reminding yourself to check your settings yeah. is yeah. key whether you're on aperture yeah. priority mode whether you're on manual or whether you're on manual with auto ISO. It's yeah. just to be comfortable check, with check, that check, mode check, yeah. and just to constantly check and make sure yeah. that you're happy with your settings. Yeah. And, and I mean, one of those things that maybe a, a final note is always shoot and review. I know there's a lot of people that shoot mirrorless now and they think, um, you know, nothing against mirrorless, I'll get there one day, you know. <laughs> but, you know, they, they look through their uh, optical or their, their electronic viewfinder and they think that that is the exposure they're getting. And how many times have you looked through a viewfinder 
seen those those electronic yeah. viewfinders, seen the image through there, taken the photo, looked at the back of your screen, and it's n not very quite similar. Same, yeah. It's not quite. It's not very similar. So DSLR people already know this. You shoot and you review. You shoot and review. Don't just shoot four hundred photographs and then go. Oh, okay, let me look at my photographs. Yeah. Take a few photos. Have a quick look. Figure out what you need to adjust. Adjust it. Take another few photographs. Have another. Look. You'll you'll be surprised how quickly you'll find that Goldilocks zone, and then you'll just yeah. be happy and you'll be shooting. And then if you've got a good guide with you, as soon as the cloud moves over that sun, that guide will tell you, guys, slow down, shut or push up your ISO, whatever it is, to get that light back. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, take your time, have fun, and don't forget to challenge yourself in exactly. photography. Don't don't exactly. get stuck in just like oh, I'm in aperture priority and auto ISO and cool. I take photos every time. Yeah, yeah it works yeah, every yeah. time. Correct. Challenge yourself, guys. Yeah. Have fun. Exactly. Yeah, that's the main thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway. that's about it from my side. Yeah, <laughs> me too. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Great. Cool. Thanks for the chat, Luke. Yeah. Really, really Very appreciate cool. it. Thank you all for watching. Yeah. Hope you guys learned something. Feel free to post some questions and yeah. um, maybe we'll keep doing little chats like this. Yeah, eh? We've got sure. a couple of other topics we'd like to chat about. For sure. Maybe one day we'll even turn this into a bit of a UFC fight. <laughs> 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 Cheers, folks. Okay. Cheers, everyone.